In the government's latest response... You must stay at home. Master of the house, doling out the charm. It's very important that everyone... Know that you are, you are not alone. G'day historians and paleoanthropologists and, and all of you fellow students. Um, today eh, we are going to look at the evidence for the out of Africa theory. Now we have another video if you're unsure of what the out of Africa theory is that goes through that in detail and just sort of touches briefly on the evidence for it. And here we're going to dive a bit deeper into the evidence. Um, that's our goal here today. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to understand and be able to describe those different forms of evidence. Um, what it's going to look like and you can do that is you be able to make a bit of a mind map um, going um, out of Africa theory. What is it? Here's the evidence for that. Here's genetic fossils and so on as we go around. Um, here's your vocabulary. Uh, these are some slightly non-historian words, like not traditionally historian words. Um, so if you get you to write these down, you'll be able to refer back to these as we move through the lesson. So just pause the video here, scribble them down, and we'll come back to it as we go forward. So fossil evidence, this is the big one, right? It's the one that we all think of because essentially a fossil, like you need a certain amount of technology to do um, genetic research and linguistic research. You need quite a deep understanding of what is. A fossil just makes sense, right? Like we, we find it in the ground. It is the remnants of a past organism. Like it's still there and that's kind of rad. Um, so fossils of early human species such as Australopithecus afarensis, um, we found those in Africa, but not further out than that, right? Like, so our earliest ancestors are found only in Africa, which means that's probably where we started, right? That makes sense. Um, so this supports the idea that humans, modern humans, started in Africa and then pushed, moved out from there, right? Um, we also see that the earliest fossils of Homo sapiens, so that's us, um, are found in Africa. We find Homo sapiens across the world, um, and fossils of Homo sapiens, but we find the oldest ones in Africa. And the closer you get to Africa, the older the ones that you're going to find are. So then you've got the Middle East and, um, I guess, Western Asia. Um, that's like the, the next round of oldest ones are found there, and, and it spreads out from there. Um, the genetic evidence. This is what I did in a different life before I was a teacher. Um, so there's a huge amount of genetic diversity amongst humans in general, um, but... All humans whose ancestry doesn't come back to Africa are more closely re related to each other than the people who are still in Africa. Um, we have more diversity within Africa, genetic diversity, than we do outside of Africa. Um, and that's outside of Africa total. Um, and what this indicates is that modern humans started and in Africa, so there's lots of genetic diversity, right? Like they're breeding uh, and partnering up in small groups and they separate from each other and, you know, changes happen. But it also shows that it was this like one group of North Eastern African people who left. And the fact that it was only, and there were a couple of migrations, but they're all from the same region, right? And the fact that they're from the same region means the genetic diversity is a lot less. They're a lot more closely related. Like the rest of the world is a lot more closely related because it was only really that one group that left Africa. And because that one group left Africa and everyone else kind of stayed and um, kept the party on and living the good solid life there, um, there's lots of genetic diversity here where we all started, but that one migration led to a small amount of genetic diversity in the rest of the world um and yeah so as you have a small group leaving you only have a small genetic pool to pull all your diversity from and then we have linguistic evidence which is really fun right um so this is an analysis of vocabulary and grammar of different languages and again there is more complexity and diversity um within africa again, within that single continent than there is outside of Africa, which is just wild to me. Um, but what that means is, again, again, it means it reinforces that idea that a single group with a single language 
were or you know minimal languages like not minimal um a minimal number of languages were what left Africa and then spread throughout there. Um, this really backs up the genetic evidence. You can see how these two are linked together. Linguistic evidence and genetic evidence in humans is a really, it's a really interesting partnership. It's an uneasy partnership because they're both, you know, they're, they're vying for that superiority there in the sciences. But don't worry about that. Uh, yeah. So, so I hope that made a lot of sense. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you have any corrections, we've had corrections recently and we've made some changes there, uh, put those in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. Um, stay, Keep digging, historians. <laughs> um, bye now.